Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, I'm going to be introducing something known as move semantics. Now, this might be something that you have heard of, but maybe you haven't actually dived into to understand, or maybe it's something you have no idea about. So this is going to be an introductory lesson, and I'm going to revisit some of these ideas in some future lessons in the video series. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss those. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into move semantics and try to get a basic understanding of what it is and where you might want to use move semantics and why this is such a a cool feature of modern C++. So let me go ahead and bring us to CPP Reference, my favorite website here. And I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit bigger. And let's just go ahead and search for move here. So within the actual uh, search here, you'll find standard move, which is defined in the utility header. Now, this is something that was only available in modern C++, meaning C++ 11 and beyond. So what exactly is going on here? Well, standard move is used to indicate that an object, T, may be moved from, and that is allowing the efficient transfer of resources from T to another object. So instead of making copies, we're actually going to be moving the data. That is transferring the ownership, or you can think of it like stealing the resource from an object. Now again, why is this cool? Why should you know about this? Well, oftentimes when we write C++ code, we are making lots of copies. So let me go ahead and just show an example of where you're often making copies. So if I have some string here, and I'll just go ahead and uh, let me write the standard namespace so we know where it's coming from. And I'll just call this string one. And let's go ahead and set it equal to, you know, long string here. Um, and I'll try to spell it right here. So you get the general idea here that this is something that might take a long time to allocate. Now, what we've learned in a previous lesson, and if you haven't seen this, check out the previous lesson, is that this is an R value. It's something that doesn't have any sort of named storage, no location, but it is something that has to be allocated somewhere. And it's just really a temporary. It's going to go away. We can't really refer or reassign this to anything. And then we have this L value here on our left side. And that's the location where we're actually going to store something in memory here. Now, where does this matter again? Well, let's go ahead and say that I create a second string here, s2, and I assign it to s1 here. Now, this is going to invoke the copy constructor here. And let me actually just write it out just so it's super clear. Standard string s2 equals s1. So this means it has to do a literal character by character copy or mem copy or whatever the data structure is. I have to spend time doing the copy here. And that includes things like, for example, if I have some function and I'm passing in uh, strings in this example, uh, s3, which is a parameter to something, and maybe we want to you know, do something with this actual string here. Well, every time I'm passing this in here, that's going to make a copy and invoke the copy constructor. Now, again, depending on what I'm trying to do in my code, I may not want to make the copy. I might say, well, whatever I'm actually passing in here, I want that resource to now belong to whatever I'm assigning it within this function. And then you might have to think a little bit about what the lifetime is of the object that you're assigning it to, but that's okay. That's what move semantics allows us to do. Avoid making a copy, but transfer ownership. So in a way, we're sort of moving the lifetime of some object here. And this is a really powerful idea for writing optimized code in C++. And as I mentioned, I promise I'll revisit this later on in our series when we talk about move assignment and sort of how these things get involved when we build a class. OK, and there's some different ways that we can indicate how to actually transfer ownership here. So instead of just passing in by value here as three, well, our choices before were to pass in by reference, which indicates we're referring to something that exists. Or if we do two ampersands, again, this makes this a R value reference here. OK, and that's what we're going to keep in mind with move semantics, this ability to pass in something like this and transfer those actual resources into an object. OK, let's go ahead and look at an example. I think that'll make things a little bit more clear and give us an introduction to the basics. So what I've provided here is 
similar example here where I'm just going to create a string here and we'll do the copy construction here because we're assigning it to this string as we are constructing it. And then I'll just create a new value, which is an empty string. And I'm going to go ahead and just compile this program and run it and we'll see what the results are. So let me go ahead and um, make sure that I use a modern version of C++ for this. So I'll provide standard 17, but you need at least 11 here. And this one's called move and I'll compile this and let's go ahead and run it here. So nothing too exciting here as expected. Our string has been assigned here and we have the new value here, which is constructed, but is by default the empty string. Okay, so let's bring in the new move semantic stuff that I have just talked about here. And I've got a little bit of an example here for you. So in order to use move semantics, we use the standard move command here, which I'll go ahead and bring up here just so you can see what's going on. And the idea is, again, that we're adopting or stealing the values from some other resource here. So we're not making a copy, but we are literally stealing or reassigning those values. Now, again, as you might think about this from an implementation standpoint, S1 here or our string class probably has some member variable called data or something like that. And we're just reassigning some pointers. Now, it's important to keep in mind that when we're actually doing the move, our new value here is what's getting the resources and my string is losing those resources. But my string will still be left in some valid state. Now, for some definition of what valid state means, that might depend on what the object is. And if you create your own types, you have to think about that a little bit. But at least the standard library, you don't have to worry about this object crashing the program, or at least that's not the intent. OK, so let's go ahead and see what happens when we go ahead and do this move here. And then I print out the values of my string and new value. So I'll go ahead and save this program. I'll recompile, rerun. And we can also see something very neat happening here where I have my string here that has the string that was stored in it. My value is empty. But after the move operation, new value now has this copy construction or I should rather say it has the copy constructed string that was originally in my string. We have transferred successfully the resources and avoided making any copies. There's just a little bit of work that has to be done to acquire the resources from my string. So just to show this another way here, let me go ahead and not do the move and just do the assignment here. New value equals my string and this would evoke some sort of copy here. So now when I rerun this, you'll see that we haven't transferred the resources again. And that is different from when we move the resources. OK, so again, let me just rerun that one more time so you can see again how new value now has what my string has. Now, it might be a little bit more clear for some folks if you want to uh, see this explicitly, what's being done here with the R value reference idea here. So I could also essentially do what moves doing here with new value and then doing a static cast here and just creating an R value reference here from my string. Now, why I'm able to do this with the standard library and the equal sign? Well, the move assignment operator is something that has been given to us. That's with the equal sign. Again, if that's new for you, we're going to talk about that later on when I talk about classes in this series. So you'll know about move assignment operator. So just to prove that this also works, let me go ahead and recompile it, rerun it. And again, you can see this is the equivalent move assignment. More frequently, I think you will see folks actually using standard move here just because it's explicit and you can see what's going on. Uh, but you should be aware that this is what's going on when you see those double ampersands. I'm saying, hey, this is an R value reference and I'm going to use the move assignment operator and steal this resource. So again, this allows us to do something very efficient with resources and be able to transfer the ownership of this resource from my string into new value by moving. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and learned something new or this helped make move semantics a little bit less scary. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about move semantics a little bit later on in the series. They're going to be important when we start building our own custom data types or user defined types using the class keyword. Again, folks who have seen other programming languages are probably familiar with that idea. So make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss those lessons. And if there was something that could be cleared up, 
please feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to answer. All right, thanks for your time, folks. We'll see you soon.